when you go into a company, if you work in marketing, you always get the doc. These are the only colors we can use. These are the logos and how much they can be stretched. You just take that for a second and think about who are the type of people that you would want to represent your brand. And like they are in and of themselves a form of branding. So I know you're not a dad yet, Benji, but there's something I have to prepare you for that I was not expecting would be such a unique journey as a parent. So my oldest is in kindergarten and we just started dealing with the loose teeth and the teeth falling out. We got a call a couple days ago. Yeah, a, a couple days ago from the school nurse and she said, hey, there's no emergency. Your son's fine. But I just wanted you wanted to tell you that he knocked out both of his front teeth. So oh my gosh. in fairness, one was loose. The okay. other one was not loose. Now they were baby teeth. So he comes home. Also, it's uh, it, it's a near Halloween time when this happened. So he came home with his like fangs, like he had two little fangs on the side and yep. no front teeth. So he thought it was so cool that that he got to be a vampire. But the craziest part about this is even after, you know, we got this call from the nurse about him having no two front teeth and we're like anxious to see him. He gets off the bus and he comes down and goes, another one fell out and opens his oh hand gosh. to another. He lost three teeth within a matter of hours. And he had like the little, I don't know how many people grew up in public elementary schools, but they got that little treasure chest box that like you have your teeth in. We had to put a third one in. So we had to figure out, we're like, this is a big deal. What is what is the tooth fairy going to bring? So I like gave him an apple the other day. And I was like, oh, he can't even eat that. No, that's like the <laughs> worst thing you could have given the kid. I know, but I didn't think about it. And then like I gave him even just simple things to eat like pizza. He, he's like gnawing on the side of his mouth. <laughs> I just felt so bad. So we, and we, because he knocked them out early, we've got to wait now for these teeth to come in because they weren't ready to come in. But- <laughs> He's like on an old person diet, just eating soup and yogurt. <laughs> I know. Luckily, he loves that stuff. I feel like most kids, I mean, give him a Go-Gurt and they're good to go. <laughs> I There's nothing cuter than a kid that's lost both their front teeth. It's so funny and comical. But three, I, that's definitely a record. Three in a day is remarkable. They're just falling out left and right. I know. Well, and the scary thing is his two fangs on the side are also loose now. So he might not have like, he might have like just gums for a little bit. So we're like anticipating that too. Luckily he feels good. And it was his best friend that head butted him in the, in the mouth and knocked him out. So they were laughing about it. Well, thanks for the update. I haven't thought about the fact that, yeah, you, <laughs> like losing your teeth was a big deal when you were in elementary I know. school and kind of looked forward to it. But also when they're like just hanging on, everyone has like their method for how they're going to get the tooth out. So more mm -hmm. to look forward to when I'm a dad. All right. We're in part two, Brent. Allie's not mm -hmm. here. We're kind of talking about social algorithm updates. Lots of people with questions. Last week, if you missed that episode in part one, we talked all about LinkedIn specifically. We know so much of our audience is posting content over there, curious about it, trying to uh, understand best practices and it's ever evolving. So today what we want to do is we want to tackle TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, which is a big feat in one episode, but Brent said he could do it. So <laughs> I'm counting on you, man, but, to, but bring us into this. Let, let's talk. Most businesses want to focus on LinkedIn. So I wanted to give, you know, that, that baby some, some extra love, but, um, but every business is also trying to figure out these other three, because if you can have a good following on these three, you're like, I mean, you've got a lot of power. So I don't know a single business that isn't trying to figure these out. So this will kind of be in three parts. Other disclaimer I have to give that I gave in the beginning of last week's episode is if you are listening to this anywhere a couple months removed from the release day, I would just turn it off. I don't know that I would ever say that about a, about a podcast that I'm on, just turn it off. But that means it'll be bad advice. This advice was bad advice six months ago. It'll be bad advice six months from now. They're always changing. We're talking about the here and now. So first one is TikTok. Do you have any experience on TikTok, Benji? <laughs> I do have limited experience on TikTok. I don't know that I want to talk about any of the experience. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, 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 I want to like ask you though, what do you know? If you wanted to mm. make a successful video on TikTok as the average person, what do you know? Okay, so on that, I would say I know very little. So it's probably perfect for me to give what, 
I okay. know. Um, if you had to guess, how would you make a popular video? Yes. My understanding of it would be that I would try to post when I think people are on, depending on the niche that I'm in, and it would get shown to a small group of people. And if some of those people like it, it will go to a much broader audience. Would YouTube edits work on TikTok videos, maybe quick cuts and that sort of thing. But again, not sure. Great, because I'm going to respond to that by saying you are absolutely dead wrong. <laughs> yes. All right. Break it down, Brent. Tell me what and I know about. someone's going to argue with me about this, but that's the one. If there's one where posting time doesn't matter at all, it's TikTok by far. Like the okay. other ones, you can make the argument that TikTok has the hardest one. It, in, in all honesty, I have posted content at midnight, 1 a.m. on a weeknight, and it has gone viral with over millions of views. And it's, it's just the most bizarre algorithm that everyone's fighting to figure out. So if you're looking to make good content on TikTok, the number one most important thing that I want you to focus on is length of view time for the user. So you have to think of TikTok not so much as a social media platform. You need to think of it more like a slot machine. When somebody sees something that they don't like, and let me tell you, if you've ever scrolled TikTok, you know within a couple seconds if you're going to like something or not, yep. it's a slot machine. The next one could be funnier. The next one could be better. The next one could be more educational. So you are competing with the unknown next thing that could be successful. So if you're putting out content that's average, people are going to swipe away. They want to see something that's attention grabbing and unique. So you have to focus on length of view time. So the first thing you need to focus on is that first few seconds. If you don't have something that's grabbing attention in that first few seconds, nobody's going to care what happens for the rest of the video because they're not even going to see it. They're going to swipe to the next thing. It could be the last 80% of the video could be solving world peace and nobody's going to see it because the first 20% couldn't grab their attention. So what TikTok does is it sees how long people are viewing it. And if it's good, it just pushes it out to more people. That's why stuff goes hyper viral on TikTok so quickly is they see, hey, people are watching this video from point A to the end and they're watching it a second, a third time. This is really good. Let's push it out to more people like this person. And then even so, they'll just keep shoving it out until nobody cares anymore. It happens really quickly. Stuff does have long shelf life sometimes, but usually it is a big quick fire that happens over a couple days that gets put out pretty quickly after that. And then you'll see some success with it, but it slows down. Okay, so, so let's just contextualize this to, to B2B <clears throat> marketing really quick because so much of what we've seen, and I while I don't understand the algorithm specifically for these video uh, social networks, you do know that there's been a huge pivot away from the typical video content that B2B companies have produced. And when you try to put that content on one of these platforms, mm -hmm. no one cares about it. So if you're in a B2B marketing team and you're thinking through whether it's you have a podcast or you have video that you're regularly recording with your team, how are you pivoting your strategy or thinking about that content differently? Is it about hooks in the first few seconds? Are you thinking about the shot that the way that it's filmed? Like it could be, I guess, both of those, but just like, I, I wonder what your thoughts are on that. Yeah. And, and all of that, like it is important for different niches, but the, the thing that I want to challenge people's thinking on with TikTok specifically is it's so easy to say our people aren't there, all of that, but think about what TikTok is. If you've ever used it, it is not where you go to see family and friends and people you love. It is where you go to be entertained. You are being shown complete strangers, people who are entertaining people who are teaching you, things like that. So if you're thinking like that, that means your content will be shown to people who have never heard of you before that you can educate. That is priceless. That is something that no other platform, like the other platforms are offering it, but not as good as TikTok is. Like people go to Instagram to see family and friends and secondarily they learn. But when you log on to TikTok, you're straight up looking for a distraction. So if you think of it like that, they're trying to figure out who you are. So me, if I'm interested in B2B marketing and I'm watching B2B videos to the last second, they're going to keep sending me more. And the more they send me, I'm going to see new people I haven't heard of, new companies I haven't heard of. You're literally getting in front of the most valuable person who is deeply interested in what you do. If, if you're a marketing company and you're creating marketing tips, 
you're going to be shown to people who are interested in marketing for their businesses. So it's almost a direct line to that top of funnel, funnel people who have never heard of you before. So it's very easy to be dismissive and say like, well, we're going to change our content, you know, all of that. But the value in it is having people who have never heard of you before learning about you for the first time. So that's how you have to think of it. The one th little thing that people don't notice uh, about TikTok that I try to get them to focus on. So when you're scrolling, it doesn't show you what day that piece of content was posted. You right. could be seeing stuff that's five months old and you would have no idea unless you actually went to the page and, and scrolled for it. So if you're making great content that's just talking about your company and what you do, you can see the benefits of that for a long, long, long time. So that's kind of how I think of it is if you wanna attract top of funnel, TikTok is a great way to do that, to get in front of those people. Um, Every other thing, you know, people love to talk about, we need to get people to like and comment and share. All of that is, yes, important, secondary to length of view time. They need to watch your video. And you have to remember that if somebody could swipe away at any moment when you're editing your content, make sure that you're thinking about that. It could even be something as simple as a breath, too long of a pause, someone saying, um, something like that could be a reason. If someone's not engaged, they're on to the next thing. And it could be your competitor who's making better content than you. B2B brands are on a hamster wheel trying to create more and more awareness. They're putting so much work into creating awareness and not nearly enough work into making sure that the content they're putting out is actually good. You can pay to build awareness. Brands do that all the time. But does the content resonate? The question should be, how do we create content that builds affinity? And that's where Sweetfish comes in. We're here to help you build your market's favorite show, not just another show. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. There's TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. All of them are basically, they've all chosen to steal from TikTok in a lot of ways. So you have YouTube yeah. shorts, you have Instagram reels. So across those three, are we thinking similarly about those specific features or how, like, how does it slightly vary platform to platform, even though the video style is relatively the same? People go to Instagram to see their family and friends and things and brands that they already love. TikTok okay. is where they go for strangers. So just remember who you're talking to. If you're talking to people who already know your brand and might be more familiar, maybe Instagram is a place to go. Because what a lot of people do, and it's a big mistake, is they take one piece of content and they just post it the same way on every platform and just cross their fingers and hope for the best. And uh, if you're not thinking about who you're talking to, there are subtle editing changes, subtle caption changes that, that you can make. The most valuable things if you're talking about like buttons that are really important is shares and saves are the most important because those are good indicators to TikTok that this is not spammy content. Everybody knows, I mean, this was best practice, what, probably five, 10 years ago is to say like, like this post, comment below with your favorite, blah, blah, blah. And that yeah. stuff would get promoted. It doesn't anymore because people don't like to see that. So if you're on TikTok and you write your comments or, or your caption saying like, comment why you love us so much, like you're gonna fail. You want people to do that naturally, but people who are saving something means I wanna watch this again later. That's a great indicator that it's good content. So now swerving over to Instagram uh, algorithm a little bit. Um, it's a little different because as I said before, it's relational. It is all about the relationship between the creator and the user. This is where having a human face teaching is going to have a big impact for your brand. It will on TikTok, but you want to have that relational focus on Instagram because the one thing Instagram is doing, they all do this in some way, but mostly Instagram is it's watching how you're interacting. So if your brand is just opening Instagram only to post and then shutting it off for the rest of the day and hoping for the best, you're never going to see, well, I don't want to say never, you're likely not to see results on, on Instagram. You need to be responding to people, DMing people, putting up interactive content, because what Instagram does, the, the best, this is a, a little like hack for you. If you wanna see a list of who Instagram knows you love the most, I say knows because they do know it, is if you log into Instagram right now, your stories are literally in a single file line of who you most wanna see to least wanna see of the people whose stories you haven't seen yet. It's going to be really hard for businesses to get ahead of people, spouses, friends, families, all of that. So you have to remember that's what you're combating against. 
The way Instagram does that is by watching your behaviors. Benji, if you and I DM'd each other on Instagram back and forth all day, they're going to mm -hmm. start showing me your content because it's saying these two people have an interest in each other and I want them to see each other's content. So if you're a business that's in your stories asking for people's thoughts or some sort of interactive like polling features, things like that, that's where if they're interacting with those, it tells Instagram they're interested in your content and they'll start showing it to them. So you have to think more relationally. Your relationship to the user and the follower is way more important on Instagram than it is anywhere else. And that's kind of the, the big pointer I have. We could get down in the nitty gritty of like how often to post all of that, but the big unique changer on Instagram is relational. You just have to be focused on the relationship. I did want to ask you, you know, you can use the story feature, but as a business, you're probably buried. You're not like someone's favorite and you're not top of line. The people that really like you are probably the ones that are going to see it. Then you have Instagram reels. So that's these mm -hmm. same sort of short form videos. It's a really easy way for businesses that start trying these types of videos. You and can that's where you want to use a lot of the similar like TikTok things where yeah. you want that hook, you want people watching, but, but primarily relationships. You will still see success with reels if you're making good content, but just remember why people are on that specific platform. Okay. And then I guess my last thing on Instagram before we go to YouTube is just typically what we remember is the grid. That's what Instagram was. Yep. It was these photos, whatever. You're saying just anything you're posting, try your reels over there but think about it through a relational lens. If you're going to be posting content, think about it through a relational lens. So would a good idea for Instagram as a post now be more of like, this is what it's like to work at X company and just have mm -hmm. photos of your people. Like some of the post types, yes, we're going to test out these short video features, but I'm thinking about the actual vi like picture content. You're saying just think relational and filter all of it through that. Yeah. And he, here's the big thing that Instagram changed over the past like five, 10 years is I'm sure anybody who's vaguely my age in, in their thirties or even twenties at this point remembers a time when Instagram was all about perfection. Everybody was using face filters, you know, all the stuff there was heavily produced. You had really high quality graphics. It's not like that anymore. People want that natural experience. So the difference between making a high produced graphic that's explaining what's great about your software versus having somebody who say like, hey, I've used this and here are my five things I love the most about it. That natural, like I even tell people, put down the professional cameras and pick yep. up your phone. Just film it on your phone. It goes against everything. Every CEO is probably gonna tell you like, why aren't we making high quality content? It is high quality as far as Instagram is concerned because people like it. So you have to take that more natural, casual approach if you want to have an impact today on Instagram. It is a weird reframing of how you think about branding and thinking you can brand around personality in a way we have failed to figure out how to talk about yet. And it's something I've thought a lot about now. It's like, the traditional form of like throwing logos on things. And like, these are our best practices. You know, when you go into a company, if you work in marketing, you always get the doc. These are the only colors we can use. These are the mm -hmm. logos and how much they can be stretched. You just take that for a second and think about who are the type of people that you would want to represent your brand. And like, they are in and of themselves a form of branding. And you have to think it doesn't really matter the video quality if what the person is saying is something that one would resonate, but also is something that, yeah, like your brand stands behind. It's it, That is a form of branding, even though the video looks different than it would have six years ago. Yeah. And I mean, th th this, I mean, TikTok and Instagram are one I could do like deep dives on and go deep. Like I know I there's so many, so much nuance that's missing. And if anyone has any questions, please, you know, feel free to reach out. But the big one that we tell at Sweetfish, all of our clients they need to be experimenting on right now is YouTube shorts. That yeah. is the big one where, and I'll tell you the, the, the biggest difference between YouTube shorts and right now, Instagram and TikTok is YouTube shorts has way more users 
then it has creators. So when you create on YouTube Shorts, you have a way better success rate of reaching more people than you do on the other apps. Like right now, if you're just starting on TikTok or Instagram, you are so late to the party, people are already starting to leave. YouTube Shorts is where we're seeing a lot of the experimental stuff right now, because frankly, YouTube is still trying to figure out how to make YouTube Shorts unique. So they're experimenting, like frankly, by the time you guys probably hear this episode, the algorithm has probably changed. That doesn't stop us from being on there and experimenting because we are seeing huge victories on the way because we just post something will blow up. I mean, Benji, you've seen it with content with you in it. You know, we've had stuff hit 10,000 viewers one day and then 10, 10 the next. But you know what happens when we have that one that reaches 10,000? We get followers from it who now follow our page, follow our brand and are now active listeners. Even if it was just because that one kooky video and maybe the algorithm was off or whatever, like we are going to take advantage of that. And then by the time they've figured it out, we've figured it out along the way because we're seeing those victories alongside them. So YouTube Shorts is also a really easy way to get them to your YouTube page if you have long form content. You're one click away. And especially if you have a podcast, Google Podcasts is not gonna exist in, I think about a year. They're moving all of their podcasting content over to YouTube. So YouTube in the next year is likely to be promoting podcast content like crazy. So if you have a business podcast and you are not experimenting on YouTube or YouTube Shorts right now, you you still have the opportunity to be ahead of the party on that. So the, the big way to, to think about it, if you want to think about all three of these and what makes them unique, TikTok is all about uh, interest focused. You want to make sure it's in your niche and it's going to reach those people who are top of funnel. Instagram is all relationship focused and shorts is more content focused. Their algorithm, as far as I've seen, is not as granular and successful as TikToks or Instagrams. You're gonna reach a lot more people. They might not be necessarily who you want to reach, but the people that you wanna reach are in there, in those numbers, and it's still successful. But YouTube Shorts is promoting content, Instagram is promoting relationships, and TikTok is promoting interests. And if you separate them into those three categories, those are great starting points for where you should make content from. So like like t t um, YouTube Shorts, sorry. Uh, that's where quality matters. Instagram wants some more natural stuff. If you're making high produced videos with great editing tricks and all of that, the YouTube user is going to, uh, is going to appreciate that so much more. You're also just, again, think about user behavior. When you go to YouTube, you see so much well done video because the platform is video it has always been video so you've gone there for your entire lived experience of youtube and you've seen quality content so in the shorts of course there's going to be some translation to where when there are editing tricks i appreciate them more on youtube even though i could probably watch the same video over on TikTok, or i could watch the same video over on instagram so i think i love how you've boiled this all down for us. It's really easy to remember how to think about all of them. And I'll say too, with B2B growth, we've tested, you know, similar videos across platforms. So we're doing all of those things as well. It's just, I like how we can now have sort of these individual ways of thinking about each platform. So we've covered LinkedIn in the last episode. We covered TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube today, which is quite the feat. All right. So before we wrap up this episode, Brent, why don't you give us one YouTube channel that we can go check out? Okay. So I, I get nerdy on like hypothetical stuff. Like I, I love seeing like what I, it's, it's so hard to explain, but, um, it, you'll know what I mean if you check out channel awesome. And, uh, they are just people who are really heavy on nostalgia and, you know, all, all, all sorts of things like that. But the one thing they do is they do experimental stuff and they, they talk about, which I like, they do like, what if Tim Burton directed Batman and Robin? And they talk about and do like, you know, uh, artwork of what it might've looked like, how it could have been. And sometimes you watch it and you're like, oh, this is genius. This should happen. So I love like, it's total clickbait. And I fall for sure. it all the time when I'm on YouTube. It's just like, what if this person directed this? Or what if, um, you know, it'll be like, what if the little mermaid was a male mermaid and the female was, was on the land? And I'm like, I hate that I want to know because it has no <laughs> impact on my life. It has no impact on my day to day. But I'm like, 
dang it, I want to see what they think. And it's usually just really fun and creative and insightful. And I like those kind of creative thinking. What, what, what am I trying to say? Those like creative kind of thought exercises that that's the phrase, like those thought exercises that make you think outside of the box. And they're really freaking cool. So channel awesome on YouTube. All right, go check out channel awesome while you're doing that. Also check out B2B growth. We're testing everything that we've been talking about today with that channel. We are learning as we go. We continue to evolve as do all these algorithms. So thanks for being on the journey with us. And we'll be back with another episode and Allie will be back next one too. So thanks for listening, everybody.